Today is Tuesday, June 12th, 2007. Take zero. I'm Sean, and I'm Peter, and today we're doing another episode on lighting. So this is Lighting 102, or something. Uh, we're on the top 50 of Podcast Alley now, so thanks a lot for voting, but keep it up. We're going to try and get on the top 10. It would really help us out and get us get us a lot more popular, and help the forum. Oh yeah, and hey, if you guys want to... Drop us a line or discuss any topics or ask any questions or just talk about your day. Go ahead and register on the forums and I'll see you there. And we're doing another episode on lighting because lighting is a very, very hard thing to learn, even more impossible thing to master. And um, we think it's a very important topic that people might overlook or might sort of ease up on. And really, it isn't. It's Lighting is everything to production. To making your movie look good. And chances are we'll do even more later on. On to today's topic. Sean will be going over three main purposes of lighting, which are um, filling a scene, guiding the viewer's eyes, and adding depth and dimension to the subject and the background. And then Peter's going to be going over one very basic principle lighting technique, which is three-point lighting. Here we go. The three main purposes of light are most obviously to fill the scene, make, make it visible, um, to guide the viewer's eye, or to add uh, compositional value, and to add depth and dimension. So the first one, um, to fill the scene with light, that's what's called quantity of light. Uh, so you, you basically add light to make everything visible. TV shows, what they do is what's called surround and drown, where they just add lights everywhere. And it doesn't really add anything creatively, but it, it allows them to have more control over the camera. Like they can lower the, uh, the ISO and they have more control over the aperture. Um, so they have they can make it look more professional just with the camera. They don't have to worry about setting up lights all the time. It makes it for faster filming that way. Second purpose of light is to guide the eye or uh, to add compositional value. And that's done with spotlighting. Um, this can be achieved by putting a snoot over your, over your light, which is just kind of like a cone. Or you can, they're either called Fresnel or Fresnel. We're, I mean, we're not actually sure what they're what they're called, but it's basically a lens actually connected to the light, so you can aim the beam of the light, really make it really tiny or make it totally spread out. And then there's backlighting, where it's the exact opposite of spotlighting, where the light lights up everything except for the subject, and the subject is in silhouette. And, and I guess with direction of light, like you can make lines of light. And here's an example from our first short film, Sean and Peter. Where we did that, we, we put a light outside, and through my blinds, you could see lines on my wall, which gave some direction to it. You get to do everything. You can direct next time. Fine. Hurry up. And the last purpose of light. Uh, which is still pretty important, but it's definitely less important than uh, filling the scene and guiding your eye. Uh, and that's uh, to add uh, depth, dimension, and color. And out of those, the most important thing is dimension. Film and photography, anything, it's all a two-dimensional uh, medium. So you have to do everything you can to make it look three-dimensional. And one way of doing that is to light everything so nothing's flat. You want everything to be light to dark. If there's an orange in your scene, you want one side of it to be in shadow, one side to be lit up. And that kind of goes the same thing with, with depth, where maybe your foreground can be in shadow and then your, your subject will be 
in the light and then your background will be in shadow again or and you can separate by uh, color or by lightness and darkness um, color you can use gels and maybe your, your subjects under a street lamp or something and the backgrounds all blue because it's nighttime and so those are the three main purposes of light to fill the scene guide your eye and add depth and dimension Okay, in this segment I'm going to go over the three-point lighting technique, which is probably very commonly used in TV and film production, and it's used to il illuminate the subject while separating them from the background. And the three components in a three-point lighting setup is the key light. The key light uh, is the main light that gives the direction of lighting, say the sun or a really bright table lamp. The fill light is the light that is placed opposite the key light that um, softens away any shadows that might have been cast by the key light. So say I have a key light on the um, left side of my face, you'd place the fill light on my right. So that way, while all the hard uh, light is being pressed against my face this way, the fill light is softening any of the shadows being cast this way. And third is the backlight. The backlight is most often placed right behind the subject. And by being placed right behind the subject, it sort of provides a kind of weird, uh, almost heavenly halo-like glow around the um, outlines of the subject, thus uh, separating them by adding an outline from the background. And right now we will demonstrate uh, what the key light is. In a key light, you generally want to have it facing the subject, obviously. And so a fill light would pretty much add direction as to where the light is coming from. Again, it could be a significant light source, a lamp, could be the sun. Overall, this is pretty much what will guide your scene. And uh, so now that's done, we're just going to go over and demonstrate what a fill light would do. And what you want to do with a fill light is a fill light around here. So the whole point of a fill light is to diffuse a light. Where with the key light, um, it would be giving my nose a really hard shadow that you could tell time with. With the uh, fill light, it would diffuse that away to the point where things would look more pleasant with them as opposed to without. And just remember that a fill light is usually at least at around, say, half the power of a key light. Otherwise, they again, they drown each other out. And now we're going to mention the, um, the backlight goes right behind me. And this here is a backlight. Um, so you can see it sort of gives me a sl very slight uh, outline of light over here that sort of separates me from the rest of the background. And that is generally what the backlight is used for. It's placed out of sight and out of the shot usually, or most commonly right behind the subject to better illuminate them. But we didn't have enough room for doing such, so that's why it looks that way. And um, this is the backlight. It's not to be confused with the background light. And the background light would fit into a four point light setup where a background light would be light being simply thrown onto the background just to light the background, which doesn't have too much uh, relevancy with the subject at all. Three point lighting setup is pretty much for the actors or the subject. And um, pretty much all these lights in spite of their heat, is pretty much a lot better than um, this light right here. 
Though that's not to say that this light is bad if you just happen to want to make a movie where it's about a fluorescent light, go right ahead. But these are just obviously principles, not rules. Apply them at your own risk. Rachel said she doesn't like it when we say feet or fan blue. She doesn't match us. Finn or fiend or just the word Finn? That, either one, as an ending. She said we should say something more like the end or... The hell does that mean? It doesn't match us? When we did the quick tip, I called it... It was episode 4 and then I did episode 4B. And then yep. you and then you put up, I did episode 5 and then you did episode 5A. So like, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so today we're giving another lecture on lighting. Not a lecture. Thanks for watching. That's too fake. <laughs> Wait, should I be in the middle? Yeah. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Is that fake? No, it's good.